Well, my DP66 Geiger counter finally arrived, so we're going to take a quick look at it. And I should say before we get into any details in this video, I am not an expert on radiation at all. So apologies if I say something incorrect. There's a lot of good YouTube channels where the people are very knowledgeable about radiation and know all the correct terminology, but I don't. But I get the general gist of it. So it should be enough to cover this thing. So it's in this sort of leather case. There's also a big case I've got in the other room, like a briefcase that came in with a load of Polish documentation. And here's the unit itself. Now, this is the speaker unit, which is good, because this is what makes the clicking noise that Geiger counters are so famous for. And I wanted an old retro Geiger counter, because I like the noise they make. Um, so, if I plug this in... Right, that's the speaker now plugged in. So when the Geiger counter is running, we can then have a listen to it. So if we have a look at the actual unit, all the top is in Polish. So I guess it's best basic instructions about the meter. And we'll have a look at what the top of this thing. Right, so let's see what we've got on this device. You have a reset button for the counter, fluorescent light that goes on, on underneath there. This, I'm not sure exactly what it does. I think it has something to do with the dosimeter charger that goes in here. Uh, but I have no use for that because I don't have a dosimeter that plugs into it. And this is to select which band you're searching for. Basically how it works is you have rock guns per hour at the top and micro rock guns per hour at the bottom. So you start off on the lowest setting which would be 0 0.5 micro rock guns per hour on the multiplier and then if you go off the scale you switch to the next setting and you keep going till you get to the one where the needle's actually in a range you can tell you know what the radiation is so it's the DP66M which is the second model and this unit was built in 1972 and I'm guessing the 1993 is a serial number because that's on a couple of things so um, if I switch it on this is just a circuit test to start with K and you see that has the K band there and the needle sticking directly in the high end of the K band so that works fine and then 200 times rock guns per hour it will go to zero 5 uh, times rock guns per hour it will stay at zero 0 0.5 rock guns per hour it should stay at zero 50 micro rock guns per hour it should stay at zero 5 micro rock guns per hour it should stay at 0. Now when I put to 0 0.5 we should start detecting a tiny amount of background radiation. Now, yep, yeah, there we go. And if I just to make it more accurate reset the Geiger counter, we'll do that there. As you can see it's ticking very slowly. At the moment it's on about 5 to 10 counts per minute. Um, that's the, as far as I understand it, that's the bottom band. And that's decays per minute or counts per minute, clicks per minute. So that's how many you know times the Geiger is going to click per minute. So when it's on five, it's going to click five times a minute. And um, if it's on ten, it will click ten times per minute. If it's on that two hundred there, it will click two hundred times per minute. And the top band, the zero zero point five one two three four five, is the um, rock guns or micro rock guns per hour. So let's um, expose it to some radiation and see it work. Now we'll take a look at the wand, um, essentially the ionising chamber for the Geiger counter. So that's the 1993 on there again, so I guess it's the serial counter. I doubt this detects alpha radiation to be honest. It can definitely do beta and it can do gamma, but I doubt it can do alpha. So it means that I'll get a slower radiation count than what's actually somewhere if it's exposed to alpha radiation. But anyway, what you do is you twist this here. And the spring loaded section pops out and this sort of polythene window is the beta uh, shield that's the beta shield there so if this open it can now detect beta radiation that can get through this layer into the chamber inside the wand and the guide counter can measure it so in theory with the beta shield up the background radiation levels will be slightly higher but only when close to something um, so now we're going to expose it to some uranium glass and we'll see the Geiger counter start shooting up Right, 
I'm going to do this off camera, but I'm going to expose the one to the um, uranium glass, and we'll see what happens. Now I've left the wand on top of the uranium glass and as you can see the um, clicks per minute is going up and so is the um, micro rockens per hour. Now this is an incredibly dangerous uh, uranium glass because the actual glass itself pretty much blocks all the alpha radiation so um, only the beta and gamma are escaping and that's not loads on its own. Um, you need to leave it on there a while for it to actually stabilise but as you can see we're getting close to 2 on there and that's at 0 0.5 so I guess that's 1 micro rock gun per hour if it's on 2 and 0 0.5 if it's on 1 I'm assuming because we're you know halving everything um, and that's between 30 and 50 clicks per minute um, or decays per minute so and hopefully you can hear as well the tick 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 is making. I've put the headset close to the camera's microphone so you can hear that. Now there's some other cool things of this which I'll demonstrate now. There is a glow in the dark um, material on this uh, screen. So I'm going to charge it up with an ultraviolet light. So what at the moment you'll see is a lot of the bluey purple colour from the ultraviolet and then when I turn it off you should be able to see the green glow obviously the longer I leave this on here the longer it will glow for but I guess that's designed so in the dark you don't have to press, press the fluorescent button to actually see the screen and hopefully you can see now it is glowing on its own that's sort of a sickly pale green colour it's going to fade pretty quickly but if it's been in the sunlight for long enough this will actually give out quite a lot of light you know, sort of sickly green light. So that's quite cool. And then if I put the fluorescent on, you see that just goes to sort of the pale yellow colour again. I don't know if the fluorescent will actually charge that. I assume it would, but I haven't tried it for long enough. Ultraviolet, you know, does it a lot quicker. And the other thing is if I move the camera over to where the uranium glass is. And I'll move the wand out the way now. And you can already hear the clicks per minute are going down. The uranium glass also glows under ultraviolet. How cool is that? So yeah, this is a very interesting old Cold War detector. You can pick these up on eBay for about 60 quid. Um, and it's a Polish DP66. It was one of the cheapest Geiger counters I could see for sale. I know in America you can get the civil defense models, um, which a lot of people like, um, but they don't seem to be available in the UK. Um, what I'm going to try and do for this, when I've got a chance, is rig up an actual speaker to go on it so it should be louder than the little headset thing that comes of it. So I've got um, something that uses a two-pin connector coming, which I can then screw the wires in from an old stereo speaker. So, although it won't be portable, if I'm doing a video of it, it should be very audible clicking, assuming the unit has enough power to um, send the clicks out loud enough. And I've also got some Fiesta wear coming, uh, some broken chips one as a test source, and that's far more radioactive than actual uh, uranium glass. Um, in most videos I've seen where people have done it, they get somewhere between about sort of 20 and 30,000 clicks per minute. So if this is at 30 clicks per minute, it's about 10 times more radioactive than the actual uranium glass. Anyway, this is the Polish DP66 Geiger counter. Thanks for watching.